In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people. Today is Friday, the 5th of March, 2021. It is Friday of the second week of Lent, Church Year B. This is Catholic Meditation, and I am Father Blessed, welcoming you to today's edition of our program. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verses 3 to 4, verses 12 to 13, and verses 17 to 28. The gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 33 to 43, and verses 45 to 46. I read from the first reading. Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him afar off, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall see that a wild beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Cast him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand upon him, that he might rescue him out of their hand to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and cast him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers heeded him. Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
God writes straight on crooked lines. God writes straight on crooked lines. Beloved of God, you may not see it now. You may not even understand why or how. But I tell you in truth, if God allows anything happen, be it good or bad, he allows it for a reason. Even when he allows you go through those dark moments of life, he is preparing you for even brighter days ahead. Yes, God writes straight on crooked lines. I remember saying this once and a Christian asked me, Father, how can God allow my mother die, especially when he knows that we need her now most? And you want me to understand that it is for a better reason, for something good? I didn't bargain for that. I would rather my mother were alive than any good thing to come after in the future that God has for us. So would he allow death for glory tomorrow? Truly, heartbreaking questions. Like I said, dear friend, you may not be able to see it now. You may not even understand why or how. But I tell you again, if God allows anything happen, be it good or bad, he allows it for a reason. God writes straight on crooked lines. God has the power to intervene and change the course of the story or the events in our lives, especially the bad moments. But he will not because of human free will. But even after human free will would have chosen and made its worst, God still comes in to fix things. Not before to interfere, else there will be nothing as free will, but he comes after to repair any damage, and that is why he can write straight even on crooked lines. Today's readings present to us the story of two protagonists. One in the first reading, who was so much loved by his father over his other brothers, and in the gospel, the heir of a very wealthy landowner and the master of the vineyard. Joseph in the first reading and Jesus in the gospel represented by the son of the owner of the vineyard. Both stories are similar in their storyline. It is the plot of others to eliminate the heir because of their hatred for him. They do not want their destiny fulfilled because they are loved by their fathers and destined for greatness. A scheme is made to eliminate them. God knows of their evil plots, but does not stop them. No, he does not interfere with human free will. He allows them achieve their evil plots out of their free will, yet he still makes it happen. Those who are destined for greatness still achieve their greatness because for God, he can write straight even on crooked lines. And even when he allows those difficult moments to happen, beloved, he has a reason. He will still make it happen. Joseph was hated by his brothers because his father loved him more than them. He was always having dreams of him becoming a great person. Dreams for greatness. And for this, his brothers hated him even the more. They planned to kill him, to destroy his destiny, to see how those dreams would be fulfilled. But you see, look at what happened. They sold him as a slave to die so that his dreams will not be fulfilled, so that he will not realize his greatness. Oh, little did they know they were rather selling him to the fulfillment of those very dreams they did not want to be fulfilled. Yes, God still writes straight, even on crooked lines. In the gospel, look at what happened. When the heir came, the owner of the vineyard, they killed him. They thought in killing him, they will become masters and owners of the vineyard. The heir is representing Jesus Christ. He came to his own people, to the Jews, brought the good news to them. But what happened? They nailed him to the cross. 
and the thought nailing him to the cross was bringing an end to him. Oh, if only they knew that taking him to that cross meant he was bringing salvation for all of mankind. Dear friends, the gospel says the very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And so the psalm of today explains, remember the wonders that the Lord has done. God's good people, you too may be undergoing a Joseph experience. You might have been hated or perhaps are still being hated, plotted against, lied about, framed up, stories cooked up. You might have lost friends. You might have lost your job as a consequence. And what is more, you might have lost your good name. Not to worry. God is still writing your story. You are the rejected stone now, but you will definitely be the cornerstone. But it comes by bearing your troubles like a Joseph, by accepting your cross, carrying it with joy, praying even for your enemies and those who persecute you. Do you know why? They think they are persecuting you. They think they are eliminating you. But I tell you, God is just simply allowing them to rather send you to that glory that has been destined for you. Therefore, to achieve this glory, we need to be a Joseph. We need to be like Jesus, the heir of the promise. Like a sheep, we are led to the slaughter, but we open not our mouth. Because we know that even in those difficult moments, God is still writing our stories. Even in those crooked lines, God is still writing straight. So therefore, dear friend, do not be discouraged. Even when you are hit by those difficult moments, even when you meet those challenges of life, do not give up. Do not be discouraged. Remember Joseph, not until he entered into that well and was sold as a slave to go to Egypt and die, then would he have met his governorship and fulfillment of his dreams. Likewise, not until you meet those difficult moments, then will your glory come. Remember, after the rain comes the sun. No sweat, no sweat, no pain, no gain. Let us pray, beloved, for all those who are going through difficult moments, who may not understand how or why, who may not see God's handwriting even in those difficult moments. Let us pray that they may not give up. Yes, dear friend, even in death, if God allows it happen, He has a reason. Let us pray for the grace that we may not give up, we are just human. We may not understand God's ways, for His ways are not our ways. But let us pray for the grace, O oh dear Lord, that even in those difficult moments, like a Joseph, we may not give up, but know that you write straight in crooked lines. Give us the grace to carry our cross patiently till the very end. For if you allow it happen, you have a reason, and always for good. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.